Hello, we are Snow Co. And we want to show you a promotional video uh, that we aired in our home room about our product, Janus Pack. As a team of four students, we designed an innovative backpack so students can utilize it as a tool to take it to the next level of productivity. Some students do not have their lunch periods, so they will carry food 
and her backpacks held up with their clothes, so when you put your book on top or your act or anything, <coughs> you would get switched. By having a specific place where you put your food, you don't have to worry about them. Next, we have our ID pocket. Our ID pocket is put in the straps so that the students when they walk into class or the school, their ID is right there showing for the staff to see. Also, by having your ID inside your backpack, there's no way you're going to forget it at home. I can tell you from experience, IDs have probably cost me about $15 this year, so it's not really a problem. And for high school students, I mean, $15 is a lot. And then we have our building charging system. Our building charging system comes with two uh, parts. The first part is the receiver coil that stays in the backpack that is wired all the way to your battery pack. And the other part is our inductive chart, as we have inductive. Platform. The inductive platform needs to be plugged in at the wall at all times. Now listen carefully because this is how it all works. So, we have our, our platform plugged into the wall. And it takes the energy from the wall and converts it to the energy necessary for the circuit to work safely. And then the energy travels from the outlet to the platform and it rests on the platform coil. When you're putting your backpack on top of the coil, the two coils go oh, one on top of the other, so they're parallel to each other. As these two coils are parallel to each other, energy, it creates a magnetic field where energy can flow through. So your energy comes from your outlet, rests in your platform. When you put your backpack on top, it goes through the magnetic field, and all the energy gets stored in the battery pack. So in the morning, when the students in the mess here realize that they forgot to charge their phone, all they have to do is just plug it in. And now, as you can see, it's charged. So we're mostly going to so we're mostly going to target high school students because we know they use laptops, tablets, and phones in their day-to-day -day basis during class time. But later on, we're looking to target college students and being a business to business. But Ryan, we'll talk about that more. So right here, you can see our market size. For our total adjustable market, we use the 50 million kindergarten to 12th grade students throughout our country. For our serviceable available market, we use the 15 million high school students throughout the country. And for our market share, we use all the 12,500 students who are in District 211. Now our retail price right now is $150, and we got there using a cost plus pricing strategy. <coughs> now for the first two to three years, we would be a business to consumer company. We would do this through our website, which we already have all built up, as you can see right here. We have our own domain name, and we are even taking pre-orders. We have at least three pre-orders as of now. In year two, we would stay business to consumer and we would sell to high school students all around the country as opposed to D211 and schools in the area. In year three, we would start to sell to college bookstores who would then sell it to their students. In year four, we would start to go business to business. We would sell it to corporations who would then put their logo on it and give it to their employees. And in year five, we would get into big box retailers. For our marketing, a big strategy we're going to use is affiliate marketing. We're going to give our backpacks for free to sales reps from different schools, and then they are going to sell those backpacks to their fellow peers. We will give them a 3% commission for each unit that they sell. This will also help us get word of mouth marketing. We're going to mainly use this, and if they, since they'll have the product on them, we can get the word of our product out a little more. We're also really going to use social media a lot. We already have a Twitter, a Facebook, and an Instagram, and we're going to continue to post more videos and put them up on YouTube. Okay, our custom pencils. So our battery pack right now, if you try to buy it in the market, it has $40. And if you buy it over 100 units, you can get as less as $32. Okay, so we have the battery pack. We picked this battery pack because this battery pack can charge your iPad twice, and you put it once before it runs out of battery. You forget to put your backpack one day in the platform. It's not Our 
SGNA costs are $40 for storage and $45 for insurance, both monthly. Now we are asking for $40,000 today. $12,500 would be for the startup backpack inventory, which would be 500 units. $7,000 would be for the charging sets that will go with all the backpacks. $3,000 will be for our marketing costs, which will include the website and social media. $7,000 will be for administrative costs, which would be for UL certification. $500 would be for storage, and $10,000 is our liquidity cushion. We want to thank you guys for listening to our presentation tonight, and we are open to all of your questions.
it was a pretty big number in there in terms of the investment in order to get sufficient inventory for this. You thought about perhaps getting pre-orders so you could reduce that cost. And, and what is the price point of the backpack? So two questions. All right. Uh, so the first one is so much money because we need to buy at least 500 units from our manufacturer. Like that's the minimum we can get in new orders. And our price point was $150. It was under our So that's our ticket pre-order. Um, I agree with the, the cost of startup. Um, this is a lean startup, right? We bootstrap here, and we try to find ways that we can go ahead and save a whole bunch of money. I like the pre-orders. I like the fact that you can go ahead and reduce um, the, um, the cost of the product by getting a, an early adopter discount. Uh, I think it's really great. If you can collect some funds, that those funds go towards your inventory, right? No. So I, I don't really think that that $40,000 number is a is a must. If you really looked at it, I would imagine you reduce that significantly. Yeah, most of our money, however, you see, it will go again because we need to buy at least 500 units of the backpacks. Um, we can buy the other ones later, but a big chunk of our money goes through our real certification, almost 7,000, and that's just a estimate that can only estimate to you because again, we want your investment to be protected and we want our customers to be protected. We're willing to pay so they can test. It's meant to be waterproof, so they do all kinds of testing, so that we have given you know safe product for customers. I, I totally appreciate all that you stated, um, but I just want to build on what Jim had suggested in terms of minimizing the risk. Um, so a la Kickstarter, perhaps, where you can take pre-orders, and then once you hit that threshold that you said you need a minimum order of 500. Then you can go ahead and order and fulfill that, that supply of the, that demand rather that is built up as pre-orders and perhaps start building um, upon your next order. So all ways to, um, I guess, uh, reduce the investor risk as well. So I appreciate that for UL certifications, you probably can't do it there, but perhaps you could on backpacking or um, inventory as well as storage until you get some revolutions of traction. You guys have got basements. I would use them. They're free. Thank you so much for that. Keep that in mind. Justin, um, <laughs> buddy. Put it in the, practice. <laughs> so, the, uh, so your marketing cost for $3,000? So what's involved with that? Well, it would be our website, our social media. I mean, uh, social media, we looked it up, I believe it would be like, 1800 or so a year like to do it on Facebook like a certain size campaign we might make the campaign a little bigger also to make sure it's seen by more people though another thing that we did that we uh, part of the second part of the video that you guys saw was we had a <coughs> backpack contest that's how we got some of our marketing uh, we asked them to take a survey and give us their email so we can keep in contact with them um, and we're going to give a free backpack like we said before our biggest uh, marketing strategy is word of mouth just by carrying our backpacks we got asked many times oh you guys have a backpack to you and like that so by giving out free backpacks people start asking where's that backpack from you know and get it, get it going so that will be also part of our marketing costs but your main go to market and sales strategy though is is to basically affiliate marketing and it's yeah, that's it's getting good. representatives in schools you know i'm just kind of curious we got some high school students in here so for three percent commission anybody interested Anybody interested in selling some uh, some backpacks at three points? Huh? I think they're out this week trying to get money for a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's actually it's, it's good money for not that much work. So. so uh, just one more thing on the marketing. Um, so I just typed in the charging in, in Google here. I just typed in charging. B, as soon as they got to B, it just populated backpack. And man, there's a lot of them. So, uh, you know, I never really thought about this before. I was like, so you're, you're differentiating you know, value prop 
proposition, or you know, you know, your go to market strategy is just word of mouth with students. That's that's we're what not, you're everybody. We're not just the charging backpacks. Most of those charging backpacks, plus if you start looking at them, you have to plug in your backpack. Yeah, Remember, right. we're not plugging in anything or anything, right. so we haven't charged iPads to begin with. This is just placing it. Try to find inductive backpack charging, that's a lot harder to get. Um, we Google it a couple of times. <coughs> So that's a lot harder, and we're not just selling this, we're selling a launch box that wasn't important, so there's more features. So if you try to get a backpack that has like all of these features, there's nothing like that in the market right now. Is it, is it, hold on, one quick. Is it utilizing any power um, by not having my backpack on the charging station? So if I just simply have it plugged in the wall, I've got my, my charging uh, the coil, is there any power being utilized if, if um, my backpack's not on it? Yeah. No, there's no power being in that. So you won't be able to do nothing like you're better if I just size one minute plug it in here. So it's the inductive piece that when you get set out of them, you have to first get it. Then it because without it, it's just the energy sits there. And it's when you have the two coils on the side of the other, then they can create the magnetic field and then there's a way for the energy to go through the prints. So so there's a, a feature or method that Jim's suggesting. This is, in essence, a green backpack because you're not drawing any current. <clears throat> Last question for me, at least on the marketing perspective. Um, affiliate marketing, sales representatives, who are you selling this to? I get it that it's going to be a customer. Who's that customer? What do they look like? What's their buying power? I would say our ideal customer would be high school students, like us, especially in this area, where Really info like the underclassmen because we believe it will help them a lot more, especially if they can transition into the high school and they're getting technology and they use it to shoot the first time. And um, tell me about your research in terms of buying power of underclassmen. What kind of disposable income would they have? Would they likely to afford a hundred fifty dollar backpack? Well we actually did a survey and we got 137 responses and forty three percent said that they would be willing to pay it.